Hey, welcome to the first lecture, well, quit, um, PowerPoint that I'll be doing for your class for statistics. And these basically are just to help you understand what's going on with the PowerPoints and possibly the book. So you, of course, want to read the book first, but then these will help if you have any questions. So let's get started. All right, so let us look at the definitions for statistics. When we talk about statistics, the class that you are taking to get math credit for, we're thinking of that statistics as the science of gathering, describing, and analyzing data. There is another de definition for statistics, and it actually talks about numerical descriptions of sample data. So remember, the first one is talking about the course itself, where the second definition for statistics talks about descriptions of data for samples. So if we're talking about a particular group of interests, we'll call that a population. And a variable is a valuable, excuse me, is a value or characteristic that changes among members of a population. Think of that as maybe the age of a population. Think about the age of the United States population. It is slowly increasing each year because of the baby boomers going up. And that is the largest segment of the population right now for the United States. And 20 years from now, that can be very different. So the variable is, an a, is the valuable, excuse me, is the value that changes for a population. Data are the counts and measurements or observations gathered about a specific variable in the population in order to study it. So data could be, like I said, ages. So we can try to get the age of everybody in the United States so we can see what the average age is. And to try to get the data from everybody in the population, we take a census. And if you know about the U.S. census, it's not very successful. We only get about 60% of the data, but we do still try to get it. So if we're going to find a numeric description of a population characteristic, it's called a parameter. What we mainly do in statistics, though, is we look at subsets of the population, and that's called a sample. It's easier to collect samples from a population than to take the whole population. So if we're collecting a subset of the population, we take a sample. And anything, a numeric description of a sample, is called sample statistics. And again, that's the definition we saw before. So here's a table to show the difference between a population and a sample. So the population is the whole group. It's the group we want to know about. The characteristics are called parameters. Parameters are generally unknown because populations tend to be large. And parameters are fixed. So let's talk about the sample. The sample is part of the group. It's the group we do know about because a smaller group is easier to get information from. Characteristics are called statistics. Statistics are almost always known and statistics change within, with the sample. So if I took a sample for the average age of Georgia, it would be different from the sample of the average age in Florida. Well, why is that? Remember, people tend to retire in Florida, where Georgia is not known as a big retirement state. All right, so let's do some examples. In a survey, 359 college students at the University of Jackson were asked if they had tried the October flavor of the month at the camp campus coffee shop. 83 of the students surveyed said yes. What's the population and what's the sample? So let's think about this. Okay, so if I'm seeing a sample, that means I have to go from a whole group of students and for here, it says a survey. A lot of times when we take a survey, that means we're take, trying to get a sample. So the sample for this, for, this, for this example is 359 college students. The population would be all college students at the University of Jackson. Now remember that 83, some people get stuck on that. The 83 is only talking about the people who said yes. That really has no bearing in this question. So let's look at the next one. A survey of 1,125 households in the United States found that 24% subscribe to satellite radio. Here again, that word survey. So our sample is the 1,125 households in the United States. The population would be all the households in the United States. The 24% just tells about what's going on, but it's not important to the population or the sample. And here it is. It's just basically saying what I did. 
Okay. So, read each of the shortened survey reports below and for each, identify the population, the sample, and determine where the highlighted value is a parameter or statistic. So, after an airplane security scare on Christmas Day 2009, the Gallup organization interviewed 542 American air travelers about increased security measures at the airport. The report stated that 78% of American air travelers are in favor of the United States airports using full body scan imaging on airline passengers. So let's look at our results. The population was all American air travelers. The sample was the 54, excuse me, was the 542 American air travelers who were surveyed. The value 78% refer to all American travelers. So that is a population parameter because we're referring to the population and not the sample. The next example, reports also conducted a survey in response to the airport security scare on Christmas 2009. The national, excuse me, a national telephone survey of 1,000 adult Americans found that 59% of Americans surveyed favored racial profiling as a means to determine which passengers to search at airport security checkpoints. All right, so the population is all American adults. The sample is the 1,000 adult Americans who were surveyed. The value of 59% referred only to the adults who were surveyed. So that's a sample statistic. You just have to be careful with the wording of these. Okay. Another thing that we talk about statistics is branches of statistics. So if we're talking about descriptive statistics, we're showing that it gathers, sorts, summarizes, and displays the data. Another branch is influential statistics. And that is involved of using the descriptive statistics to estimate population parameters. This is the one that gets people into trouble all the time because if you read a statistic that says, if I find out a statistic and said, okay, I found that the average age of Georgia was, let's say it's 50. So then sometimes people will take it and say, since the average age of Georgia is 50, I can assume that the entire south and southeastern portion of the United States is 50. That's taking the descriptive statistics you found and inferring it on an actual and on a different population. And you cannot do that. You have to be really careful when you do. And that's how people get in trouble, how drug studies get kicked out because of that. So let's look at one. So identify the descriptive and influential statistics using this excerpt from this article. In a news report on the state of the media by the two people, they wrote the following. AOL has 900 journalists, five of them at the local patch news operations. By the end of 2011, Bloomberg ex ex excuse me, experts to have 150 journalists and analysts for its new Washington operation, Bloomberg go government. All right, so let's see which is which. So we can say that when they said 900 journalists, 500 of them are at the local patch newspaper. They're describing actual counts and not estimates. So that's descriptive. On the other hand, when it says Bloomberg expects 150 journalists and analysts for its new Washington operation, they're referring to an estimate because they're expects. That's, that's an inference. So that's the difference between the actual descriptive and the inferential statistics. I hope this helped. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.